When NBA draft night arrived on June 25, 2009, the once proud New York Knicks found themselves at the crossroads of hope and despair. On one hand, the Knicks were mired in the franchise's longest playoff drought since the 1960s. On the other hand, the Knicks entered draft night with their eyes set on a made-for-the-garden star who could return New York to contention and relevance. The player in question was Wardell Stephen Curry II, but as Knicks fans have grown accustomed to, the night didn't unfold as planned for New York. Instead, it was the trajectory of another long-suffering franchise on the country's opposite coast that was forever altered. The son of longtime NBA sharpshooter Del Curry, Steph was a late bloomer who exploded onto the scene as the star of Small Davidson College in his home state of North Carolina. The sleight of frame Curry was never a highly recruited or talked about high school player. For even the most passionate of hoops heads, their first real awareness of Dell's son came during Steph's sophomore season at Davidson. Curry stole the show at the 2008 NCAA tournament, where the 10th seeded Wildcats advanced all the way to the Elite Eight thanks to his unforgettable heroics. The Knicks wound up with the number six pick later that year, and it's fascinating enough to consider what might have been had Curry headed to the NBA after his magical 2008 run. But he returned to college for his junior year, where he led the nation in scoring. There was also a legendary performance against West Virginia at the 2008 Jimmy V Classic that had fans at Madison Square Garden hoping they were getting a glimpse at the future of MSG. Davidson looking for the lead. We're in the final minute. Curry. Got it! Curry declared for the 2009 NBA Draft, where he was seen as a likely top 10 pick in a class that featured Blake Griffin and James Harden, among others. In hindsight, it's easy to question why Curry wasn't a no-brainer top five pick, if not higher. But remember, this was 2009. Curry himself hadn't yet revolutionized the game or the association, and he was still seen as a wiry guard with bad ankles who was too dependent on three-point shooting. Still, there was a certain kind of indescribable it factor Curry possessed an abundance of, and New York wanted some of it. The Knicks were coming off their second straight 50 loss season, hadn't made the playoffs in five years, and hadn't won a postseason series in nine years. New York entered the 2009 lottery with the eighth best odds and came out of the proceedings with the number eight overall pick. It didn't take much to connect the dots between Curry and the Knicks. Though not much had gone right for New York's beloved team over the previous decade, even non-Knicks fans easily envisioned Curry in blue, white, and orange by the time the next season tipped off. Curry and his camp made no secret of their desired destination. Dell told former Warriors head coach Don Nelson not to draft his son with the number seven pick, while agent Jeff Austin tried to lobby his client to NYC. Though Nelson's style also suited Steph's game, Mike D'Antoni was in New York, and the run and gun three point happy possibilities of getting to play for D'Antoni in the Mecca had to be tantalizing for a young Curry. I absolutely was wanting to go to the Knicks. The draft was in New York. It was my dad's birthday, June 25th, 2009. I had a lot of conversations with the GM of the New York at the time who said if I was on the board, they'd pick me. So there's a lot of hype because being in New York, I thought I was gonna be a, a New York Knick. As draft night tipped off, the first few picks went largely as expected. Griffin to the Clippers, big man Hashim Fabi to Memphis, Harden to Oklahoma City, then eventual rookie of the year Tyreek Evans landed in Sacramento. Aside from the Warriors' possibility at number seven, the biggest threat to New York's dream was Minnesota, who could have used a point guard to pair with Kevin Love and who owned back-to-back -back picks in the top six. The Timberwolves ended up using both the number five and number six selections on point guards, but somehow neither one was Steph Curry. For a few brief moments, Knicks fans and the team's front office must have been over the moon, cackling about Minnesota's incompetence and the opportunity it would now provide them especially with Curry's camp actively dissuading the Warriors from selecting Steph with the next pick. But Nelson and Warriors general manager Larry Riley were undeterred, ultimately changing the course of Warriors, Knicks, and basketball history. With the seventh pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select 
Stephen Curry from Davidson College. I didn't realize that there were so many fans who, are, who dislike the Golden State Warriors so much. <laughs> Actually, the reaction says it all. Nothing against Golden State, but these Nick fans wanted Stephen Curry. With the eighth pick, the heartbroken Knicks selected Arizona big man Jordan Hill. Hill would play 24 games for the franchise before being traded to Houston midway through his rookie season as part of cap clearing transactions. That eventually led to the acquisition of Amari Stoudemire in the summer of 2010 and later to Carmelo Anthony in 2011. All of that wheeling and dealing led to three playoff appearances and one measly series victory. As of 2022, that 2013 playoff run is New York's only second round appearance over the last 22 years. As for Curry, he quickly grew to love the Bay Area. Though ankle issues hampered him early in his career and led to the team-friendly extension that eventually helped a juggernaut Warriors team add Kevin Durant years later, the Warriors did what the Knicks dreamed of doing with Curry in the fold, go from perennial laughingstock to young team on the rise. After an ownership change, some front office reshuffling, roster makeovers, and the drafting of Klay Thompson and Draymond Green, Curry became the centerpiece of a playoff mainstay while shooting the leather off the ball. He forced us and future generations of ballers to reimagine the limits of a shooter's range and move the NBA into a perimeter dominated future. Oh, and guess where his first career 50 piece came? To the two on one back the other way. Curry, why not for three? Bingo! And the Knicks crowd is stunned. Steph Curry with 54 points, tops in the NBA this season. Through his first 13 seasons, Curry racked up eight All-Star appearances, eight All-NBA selections, two MVP awards, one of which made him the first unanimous MVP in league history, an All-Star Game MVP honor, and the first ever Western Conference Finals MVP award. He was also selected to the NBA 75th anniversary team. To put all that in perspective, Curry alone has as many All-NBA selections to his name over the last nine years as the Knicks franchise as a whole does over the last 31 seasons. Curry has more MVP awards in his career than the Knicks do in their 76 year history. By the end of his fourth season in the Bay, Curry had already helped the Warriors win as many playoff series as the Knicks have won over the last two decades. Since the 2009 draft, Golden State has notched 189 more regular season wins than the Knicks have and has won three championships, with Curry's Warriors currently gunning for a fourth as the Dubs play in their sixth finals over the last eight years. The Knicks, meanwhile, remain as focused on the lottery today as they were that fateful night back in 2009. In a cruel twist of fate, MSG did get to host one of Curry's finest moments 12 years after that 09 draft, though. Again, here's Curry for the record. It's good! There it is! Stephen Curry! The all-time three-point king in the NBA! As if the memories and what could have been aren't painful enough for Knicks fans, it's the way Curry looks back at how the 2009 draft unfolded that really rubs salt in the wounds. I thought I was going to be a, a New York Nick, but they always say, careful what you wish for. Everything happened the way it was supposed to be, so I'm a warrior. Yes, you are, Steph. And Knicks fans will never get over it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.